Hey everyone, my name is Liam. Today we'll be starting our journey of being the perfect development environment set up for you. Part of being a developer means knowing exactly what you want your computer and all your devices to just be set up like, to what the port you want to look like. For example, I have an Android phone, Google Pixel 5, as well as a Samsung Galaxy S10. I have a MacBook Pro computer, or well, laptop, and I also have a custom book gaming PC. I make these things work for me because I install similar types of software from the same developers and companies. For example, today we'll be discussing Slapdash, which is a great cross-platform and cross-app tool that allows you to view all of your documents and files. This application is available on Windows and Mac OS. This is something that I use every day. I use it as my new tab page on Google Chrome, and I also use it as an, as a standalone application when I'm not on Chrome or Edge or any other browser that I use. Being a developer, I really need to be efficient with my work. Not only do I use programs like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code to program and GitHub to uh, share my code with the world, I also use applications like Notion, which is a document tool to be able to create scripts for videos like these and to be able to document my journey through the software development experience. Today, we're going to be getting you to be able to create your ideal Slapdash environment. And this is episode one of setting up your environment or the walkthrough series that I like to call it. So welcome to walkthrough episode one, setting up and installing Slapdash. I hope you enjoy it. This video is brought to you by Acold Robotics. Check out everything we're doing at devlog.acold.software. Our most recent post from October 20th was My Terminal Setup, customizing my terminal using hyper.is, which we'll be covering in the next episode. We're doing a complete revamp of this video in a blog form on our web blog. And if you're interested, check out our dashboard and find out more about us by clicking on the About tab. See you guys soon. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to this link, slapdash.com. The link will be in the description below as well if you can't bother, out, bother typing out those 12 characters. So, this, uh, what I primarily use Slapdash for, I use it for GitHub, I use it for Notion, I use it for Slack. However, you can use it for almost any application that you want, any major application, including Google Docs, Google Sheets, Zoom, uh, Figma, GitLab, Google Drive, etc. Um, and it has a great interface. This is one of the really, really good things. Um, it, you have, they have a light and you have a dark mode, and it works as a standalone app as well as a browser extension. Uh, you can have set it to be a, your new tab page, or you can set it to um, just be an application. So let's get started. So we're going to cr create an account. We're going to call ourselves Gizmo Gizmo Codes. And our email address will be. Uh, no, we need a. I'm going to use one of my spare email accounts I actually have access to. And we're just going to. I'll be deleting this account afterwards, so don't actually need to do anything there. So I'm going to verify my account and I'll be right back. After verifying your account, you'll see that you get to this link. Slap that. Slap slapdash.com slash home and you'll see this little pop-up. Well, it's not really a pop-up, but we're going to just continue in the browser because I'm using the Windows <laughs> screen recorder and that doesn't allow us to switch apps. But remember, down the desktop app is recommended. I uninstalled it for this tutorial. Um, so we're just going to continue. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check out what we have here at the bottom. We have our profile, so we can set up our profile picture and preferences, work, workspace image, we can set light or dark mode. I usually prefer to use light mode for things like this, but we're going to use dark mode because most developers apparently prefer dark mode. And we can either have command, uh, we can either have a input, de uh, default input or command mode. We're going to go over that in a second. And, um, but really the main thing we're going to focus on is apps. For example, when you're looking at GitHub. Let's connect to GitHub to our uh, our setup. So I'm using one of my spare GitHub accounts, 
and I will be signing in to a new account. So not signing into a new account, signing into my spare account. Um, I think we can updates, won't it? verify the device verification and we'll grant access to that organization as well and now we ne then need to do not go anywhere just select include all repositories that's that's the default option obviously now let's go through here we can search and explore we'll go through search and explore in a second edit packs we add it modify github issues directly in slapdash now one of the cool things about slapdash is not only does it provide you a way to open your documents from across multiple apps from one page. It also allows you to edit certain things in the Subdash app from just enter typing in a bunch of commands into this little bucket here. Now, you can't edit all things. For example, um, you can't edit things like, um, like I don't know, a file in GitHub, but you can edit issues. So you can comment on issues and you can edit issue comments or, or the entire issue itself. And you're able to create new GitHub issues and create new GitHub gists as well. Now we will, we're including private repositories and users of the repositories as well, so we're able to see who. Right, for example, if we want to say find me all repositories with from this organization, or find me all repositories that I'm collaborating on with this user, it's very very easy to do. Now we're not going to be installing every app that I use because most of those apps I've actually set them up with my main accounts. I only have one account for most apps. We're only setting up two or three apps today, but we ought to get a good idea of how this pro this process works. So we're just going to wait for it to set up. Um, and it does take a while. Now, this bucket, I like to call it a bucket. I don't really know what you call it. I mean, I thought it's like a search bar. That is really the oh. If the apps are maybe the bread of Slapdash, the search bar is the butter. The bread is 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 what you, is the main part of it, but the butter is what allows you to slide along the bread. I don't really know. That's that's the best way of describing it. Basically, what does a search bar do? It allows you to search for things. This search bar allows you to say search for all search through across all apps if you can the connected to Slapdash. It's sort of like Spotlight on the Mac but better because it works on multiple platforms and it, and it works with web apps like for example github is not really an application like it's not really oh, there's no official github application for mac that like ha is like it's like it's not like you can just have a github have the github website as an app and then search through github stuff on your on your spotlight you have the github editor app but you don't you don't have the full github if you know what i mean so it's it's sort of like spotlight um yeah and but one cool thing about about slapdash you can actually customize your space you have things called spaces you can have on my personal account i have a space for work i have a space for school i have a space for um like those side projects and so on so but those spaces don't are just for one one type of application one type of file you can say Okay, I want to say all all files that are in the school folder of my Google Drive and all GitHub repos that have school in the name to be included in this space. And you can see all the, all the recent commits to those repositories. For example, I have a bunch of private repositories on my main GitHub account. I'll, I'll say, you know, they're um, school dash app one or school dash app two and that allows me to easily find the recent file changes just from such so I, I can get let's get a very quick update on what's been going on now it does take, again it does take a while to set up different applications i don't have the fastest internet connection i live in australia which is not not really very good for internet connections and if we keep going through here there's not really much you know not, not really anything too complicated um now you also have teams now teams are really useful if you work on a lot of files with with with, with different teams if, if you if most of the files that you use on a daily basis 
are team based files, for example, using Google Drive Enterprise or using GitHub for Teams. And they also allow you to do things like commands. Now, commands, you have a limited number of commands on the free version of Slapdash. I, this is not a sponsored video by any means, but I do have the premium edition of Slapdash on my main account. On this one, this one I just created just for the video, show you the setup process. Now, you only, I think, I'm pretty sure you're only allowed to have two custom commands on the free version of Slapdash. And what those allow you to do is, is it allows you, just, it's sort of like the spaces, but using in the command, in the this command bar, the search bar. So, for example, if you want to, you can say slash notion, and then space, and then uh, what, what do we say? Um, school again, school. So you can say hey, um, and then I would say it would search for all files from notion within within school. So I think we can. I'm hopefully hopefully we can close that now. Um, I can get on to working with other apps. Connect other apps. Let's say connect. Um, we've added a few since, since, I, since I last checked. Let's check out um, Notion. Yeah. I'm going to stop the video because I don't want you guys to see my access key, obviously. And I will very quickly. Um, be back. Okay, so I'm hoping you would have been able to click on that link and are then able to go into Notion, into your Notion, and get your get your access key. Now, once once you do that, it's pretty simple. We just need to wait for everything to install. But we can already see here that we've got most of the stuff here. Now, this is, I'm going to switch to light mode. This is actually starting to hurt my eyes surprisingly. And hopefully this doesn't hurt your eyes, but then again, I don't care if it does. So we can see, oh, what's the most recent page I created? The walk up, the walk through one slash, which is sort of like the draft. Because not only are we creating a video for this, for this, not only are we creating this video, we're also creating a blog post for this. So we can search for Notion. So we can search browse Notion. And we can see Liam's Notion. I have School 20, school 20 the walk through signal kinetics video games 2018. Now, the one problem I have with Notion on Slapdash is that if you have sub pages or if you have organization pages, those don't always show up. And a lot of the time also things like with your, your recent GitHub commits don't like they don't take a long time to show up as well. But we can, so what we can do very quickly is we can say click on GitHub and we can open, which will open GitHub, or we can explore and we can see what are our most recent commits or issues or pull requests or whatever and uh, it's gonna take a little while because I've got a lot of stuff in my on my second account. So here's repositories. So you can see a equal dash body slash. No, let's, let's go to a public one. Uh, let's go to this one. So you can see issues, pull requests, branches, and commits. We can, if we, oh, and projects as well, which is actually quite cool. But let's go to issues. So we can see initial setup. We can click on that, or we can edit it. Okay, so we can rename, we can close it, we can copy the link, we can open. Um, or what we could do is we could say, we go back to home, and we'll say GitHub. And we could search for Exoplanet. And that's it. Okay, we have Exoplanet ML and it is in GitHub. You can set as a space. For example, if we have a lot of repositories or to do from GitHub regarding Exoplanets, we can set that as a space called GH Exo. We can set the custom icon uh, or any emoticon. Um, let's set it to, I don't know, something. Uh, is, there, is there a Mars emoticon? Rocket, what the hell is this to rocket? I don't know. And now you can see everything in this space. Well, we first have to start the space. So you have as many spaces as you want, and unless you actually favorite them, you don't, they won't appear in the sidebar, so it means it's a little bit cleaner. We can see, okay, now you can go home and click on this, and that shows every single search query relating to GitHub Exo Planet. So I guess the next step is installing or connecting Slapdash to all the apps that you want. It roughly works the same. The last thing we're going to get into is commands. So let's go with great new GitHub issue. Let's edit that. So, for example, if we we can go to command, go to the commands tab and we can uh, look at the discover commands tab and we can go to GitHub, which is 
in here apparently. Because you can have multiple Notion accounts, so you can't have multiple GitHub accounts on Slapdash. And that so there's two default commands that are installed when you that when you connect GitHub to Slapdash, you can run that. So you can easily create new GitHub issues or create a new GitHub gist. But that just sent that is a link that doesn't actually run in Slapdash. Let's create commands. So for example, if we can customize the icon, so let's set it to that one. I'll call it um, demo. This is a demo. It's a demo. Then open. Or we can. The LOD is coming soon. Open enter var enter valid URL. Now you could easily see this this URL if we were to duplicate this tab. And then go to GH. We could easily just custom copy that and this valid URL. So then now, from now on, we can go back to home. We go slash demo. And that takes us the GH exo space. So that's really the first part of customizing your uh, or setting up the development interface. Now remember a lot of these applications are what I use. You do not need to use all of them and there are obviously apps that I do not use at the moment that you use. The, um, I'm happy, uh, my, the team at, is, at Gizmo Codes is happy to I guess see what you guys are using. We're going to be checking out Hyper next. Hyper is a terminal or a, a replacement for the command prompt on Windows, a replacement for terminal on Mac. It looks beautiful, it's open source, it's powered by Versal, and I do think you guys are going to love it if you haven't already checked it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and Eli will be back in the next one when we cover the Hyper terminal. See you later.